Is this the best all-in-one soundbar for the price? Today we're looking at the Harman Kardon Citation Multibeam 1100, which has got quite an elongated name. Now in the UK and at the time of filming, it can be found between £900 and £700. In this review, you can see if it's actually worth this price tag and how it compares to similarly priced rivals. Now to kick off this review, I do want to talk about its design and here the dimensions will be on your screen right now. You can wall mount it or like in my case, place it on a cabinet whereby it fits pretty well with a 55 inch TV. Now in terms of the design of it, there is a nice sort of fabric mesh material that stretches around the soundbar and in my subjective opinion, it looks pretty stylish. Now you can pair up the soundbar with other units and by that I mean rear speakers and also a subwoofer. These are available as an additional extra and will work in terms of a multi-room setup as well. Great additions in order for you to upgrade at a later date, although of course will cost you a pretty penny. Now back on terms of the design of the soundbar itself, you will notice at the top there is a cutout and indeed over here there's an LCD display which has got touch sensitive input. So much so it almost replicates like using a smartphone or an app. Now it's very responsive and I've got no complaints in terms of the usability point of view. However, I do think a touch sensitive panel at the top of a soundbar is somewhat redundant, specifically given that when you're adjusting your settings, you can't actually see them unless you are sat in front or indeed above the soundbar, which is definitely going to be of concern for those people who are wall mounting their soundbar. Now here, Harman Kardon have tried to alleviate the problem by including LEDs at the front of the soundbar. But good luck remembering the combination when you're changing the settings. And in this respect, I just would have simply liked a LCD or LED display at the front of the soundbar that gave me just an indication of the settings that I was adjusting from afar. Speaking of which, if you do want to control the soundbar from afar, there's a bundled remote. I've got no complaints in terms of the aesthetics or indeed the build quality. However, there's a few key functions that are missing from it, such as the pure voice and the night modes. These can only be enabled or disabled via the touch sensitive display that's found at the top of the soundbar, making it quite cumbersome, specifically given that the pure voice function gets enabled every single time you power on the soundbar, no matter the previous setting that you've used. I feel that Harmon Cardam have had somewhat of an oversight in this respect. Equally, there's no bundled app, so therefore if you do want the latest firmware updates, you're going to have to pair it up with one of the connected services, such as in my case, I paired it up to my Google Home account and therefore was able to download the latest firmware. If I hadn't done this, then I was not able to access my Wi-Fi network and indeed any sort of firmware updates and therefore might leave some people alienated. Now this does perfectly lead me onto connectivity and here over a wireless connection you have got Wi-Fi whereby the 2.4 and 5 GHz frequencies are supported. Then you have got Chromecast, Apple AirPlay and also Alexa MRM, all of which are certainly appreciated. Now as for Bluetooth, you have got the SBC codec only, which is the lowest quality of the bunch and therefore you'll want to use it sparingly. In other words, over a wireless connection, you'll want to go over Wi-Fi, but of course you do also have wired connections. Now for you to connect up to your TV, you'll want to use optical or better still HDMI, whereby the eARC standard is supported. Now this will give you uncompressed Dolby Atmos, however if you have got an older television that runs the ARC standard, it is of course backwards compatible, so don't worry about it. Now then, you do have an HDMI input, although it's a singular input that's limited to the 2.0 standard. In other words, it will feed through 4K HDR and also at 60 Hz, but will not feed through higher bandwidth, in other words, 4K 120 for those people who have, let's say, a modern day console. It's quite a shame given the product price and indeed the category that it comes in at that the Harman Kardon have not included a higher bandwidth port which would have provided a little bit more flexibility. So with all of that in mind, how does it actually sound? Now I know it's not going to be ideal demoing the soundbar via my microphones and on YouTube, but it'll give you a little bit of a taster. First up, I'll be going to a music demo using Priya J's track titled Like Me, then going to a piece to camera whereby I will be presenting the MG4 EV on Totally EV. Do check out the annotations on your screen to understand how the soundbar is currently running. Okay. 
finally found a vehicle that matches the colour of my water bottle. That's completely insignificant, but what isn't is the fact that the MG4 EV is the first C-segment fully electric vehicle from the Chinese automaker. Indeed, it's competing with the likes of the Cooper Born, VW ID3, Nissan Leaf, Renault Zoe, among a few others. And it's also the third instalment in the EV range, whereby it comes in after the success of the ZS EV and the MG5 EV. Now, despite being the newest addition to the fleet, it's it comes in at £26,000 with the top spec trophy long range that we have on review coming in at just £31,500. Now with the audio demo out of the way, I should just quickly mention the soundbar setup. And here you've got 11 drivers that output a whopping 630 watts, at least according to the manufacturer. You've got a frequency range from 52 hertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz. Now further breaking it down, you've got six 60 watt racetrack drivers, three 50 watt one inch tweeters, and two 60 watt 2.75 inch upward firing full range drivers. So with that in mind, how does it actually perform? Well, unfortunately, due to the emission of a subwoofer and it tailing off at 52 hertz, which is quite surprising, here you'll find that the sub bass tones do not extend and therefore means that it'll leave you a little bit uninspired when it comes to listening back to music or of course when it comes to watching back some movies. Now that's not to be mistaken with the mid-bass response, which is absolutely phenomenal. Of course, this very much depends in terms of your own settings, but in my case, I left it in terms of its zero EQ, and I felt that the mid-bass presence and in terms of the quantity and quality were absolutely perfect. I had no issues whatsoever, and the musicality that was produced by the soundbar was certainly impressive. Now as for the mid-range, here it was actually taking me back by surprise. I added one notch to the treble and here I just found that the overall mid-range just did come out to be pretty impressive. Now the pure voice function is enabled and you might have noticed that there was very little difference if any when it came to disabling or enabling the pure voice function. So much so that I just permanently had it enabled no matter the type of content that I was consuming from piece to camera, from music or of course let's say regular terrestrial TV. Ultimately, what I'm trying to say over here is that the overall mid-range tones from the lower mids and the upper mids were very, very good, specifically for an all-in-one system that has a somewhat limited driver configuration. I would say it's up there with some of the best mid-range sounding soundbars that I've currently reviewed. Now, as for the highs, they do extend pretty well thanks to the dedicated tweeters. And yet again, I had no complaints when it came to listening back to music or of course watching movies because I had that toe tapping feeling thanks to the zingy highs. So what about when it comes to its soundstage reproduction? Well, for me to demo it yet again, which I appreciate is not going to be ideal, I'll be going on to Transformers Age of Extinction and enabling and disabling Dolby Atmos. Do pay attention for the annotations on your screen to yet again understand how the soundbar is currently operating. Now hopefully you were able to pick out via the audio demo that Dolby Atmos certainly added that extra height information and really gave me a room filling and cinematic feel. Indeed Dolby Atmos was far superior than Dolby Digital or Dolby Surround and something that I would certainly urge you to try out at least if you have access to it. Now it's worth pointing out that the Harman Kardon Citation Multibeam 1100 does not support DTSX unlike some of the rival alternatives out there on the market which might come to a disappointment to some video files out there. Now if you do not have access to Dolby Atmos or of course don't frequent it then here you'll still be left very impressed by the overall soundstage be it in terms of the positional cues or the overall width and depth specifically if you enable the smart surround option. I actually had this enabled permanently when I was using the soundbar for my own content that I was consuming and I was left very impressed. 
from listening back to music, movies, or of course watching YouTube videos potentially like this one that you're watching right now, you'll feel a level of immersion that you would not get if you were to disable the smart surround function. So with all of that in mind, can I see myself recommending Harman Kardon's all-in-one setup? Well, if you're limited in terms of space and you want phenomenal sound quality, then definitely. And as a result, it gets my performance award. However, I can't wholeheartedly recommend it given that there's some other soundbars out there on the market, namely within the group, and by that I mean Samsung owns, of course, their Samsung soundbars, JBL, and even Harman Kardon. And in this respect, the former two brands offer a compelling alternatives. They will be down in the description below for your own consideration. Now, of course, you can add rear speakers and a subwoofer to the Harman Kardon Citation Multi-Beam 1100, but that will drive up the price, taking it to a further different competition level and therefore further taking away my overall recommendation. Now, I'd be curious to know which soundbar you would pick and why down in the comments section below. And of course, if you like this independent detailed review, definitely do consider dropping a like, subscribing and hitting that bell notification all of which would be greatly appreciated and allows me to continue delivering honest reviews like this one. As such, I've been totally dubbed and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.